Our general perception of the German Wehrmacht is that it was a more or less elite fighting force and that this quality of eliteness was best demonstrated by its panzer divisions. There's even an assumption that even when recruiting standards fell lax for infantry units and other units, that panzer divisions were always crewed and commanded by relatively skilled commanders. However, in this video I'd like to present a bit of a challenge to that narrative by talking about the career of the unit, the 22nd Panzer Division, a unit which was neither competent nor which produced any notable commanders. So without any further ado, let's talk about the power and glory of the 22nd Panzer Division. In September of 1941, the 22nd Panzer Division was established in France and it was equipped with Czech, French, and outdated German tanks. This unit was formed in response to the need for more German armored power on the Eastern Front, so the unit was quickly transferred to the East and first saw action in February of 1942. On March 20, 1942, the 22nd Panzer Division launched an attack and lost 30 to 40 percent of its combat strength in one day. This is largely due to the fact that the unit was primarily equipped with the outdated Panzer 38. Now, the 38 was a reliable design and it would continue in modified forms to serve throughout the war as an anti-tank vehicle. It also had generally good reliability and it was relatively fast for the standards of the day. However, it was massively under-armed and under-armored, so it was not really capable of doing a lot of damage to a T-34 or a KV-1, and it really couldn't take any punishment at all. So it was a hazard to its crews, and this thing should not have been on the front lines on the Eastern Front in 1942. Following the bloodbath in March, the 22nd Panzer Division was transferred to the army of Erich von Manstein, who was invading the Crimea. In this theater, the 22nd and its crews were largely safe from large-scale death since the Soviets in the area had no tanks with which to oppose them. So mostly the 22nd would have been engaged in infantry support and helping to bust up prepared positions. At some unknown juncture, some of the captured Soviet tanks entered into the inventories of the 22nd Panzer Division. Here is a Soviet KV-1 tank which was integrated into the unit. Now the problem with captured tanks is that you don't have a ready supply of spare parts and World War II tanks, all of them including the T-34, were not actually all that reliable and required constant maintenance. So I don't know how long this KV-1 would have been serviceable. However, if you were a crewman in a Panzer 38 and you had the chance to transfer, you would take it since this tank has the luxury of being able to take a hit. Following the successful Crimean campaign, the 22nd Panzer Division was redeployed to the north and it was slated to help protect the main German force pushing towards Stalingrad. Stalingrad at this time was the primary objective of the German army and the thought was that if the Germans could capture Stalingrad, then this would cut the Soviets off from their main source of oil. Needless to say, both sides were willing to commit any and all available forces to the struggle, and both sides saw it as potentially decisive. So the 22nd, because of its limited combat capabilities, was not going to be on the front lines of the struggle, and they instead were tasked with helping to defend one of the flanks of this advancing force. During Operation Uranus, the 22nd Panzer Division was combined with the 1st Romanian Armored Division to form the 48th Panzer Corps, and this was supposed to strengthen the mostly Romanian infantry units on this northern flank of the German army. However, the Soviets saw this as a potential ground of weakness, and they decided to assault the area with a large number of tanks in order to try to encircle the German army further south at Stalingrad. Unfortunately for the 22nd, the way that they had stored their tanks for the winter um, by packing them with straw to protect them from the frost had made them vulnerable to mice. And by the time that they needed to pull their tanks out of storage and go meet this Soviet onslaught, it looks like they may have only had about 30 serviceable tanks for an entire tank division. Uh, obviously this was not nearly enough and in a vicious three-day battle the 22nd was more or less wiped out and then its um, 
units went all over the place and joined various impromptu panzer groups um, and this was just a complete and total disaster there were also some mixed up orders where um, the commander of the unit sent one part of the forces in one direction one part in another it was just a complete fiasco and basically by the end of operation uranus on november 30th the 22nd panzer division was a unit which existed more in name than in any kind of reality operation uranus had run from november 19th to november 30th and soon thereafter the soviets were able to encircle the sixth army at stalingrad this resulted in a siege and by february of 1943 the german army in the area no longer existed now, it should come as no surprise that Hitler was looking for a scapegoat for this, so as early as January he had General, Lieutenant General Ferdinand Heim, the commander of the 48th Panzer Corps, removed from command and confined to solitary imprisonment. So after a few months in jail in April of 1943, Ferdinand Heim was transferred to a military hospital, thus trying to imply that there was something wrong with him psychologically and then he was uh, reclassified as retired in May. Later in 1944, Heim would be restored to active duty and sent to Bologna, which Hitler had declared a fortress to be defended at all cost. The problem is that as with many of Hitler's declarations in the later war, there weren't actually any resources there. So basically, General Ferdinand Heim got the pleasure of commanding the 22nd Panzer Division twice, even though by 1944, the 22nd no longer existed. Despite the fact that it had been effectively destroyed as a fighting force in November of 1942, the 22nd Panzer Division officially continued to exist until April of 1943 when it was officially disbanded. This unit, I think, is the ultimate illustration of how German Panzer Divisions were not all elite units that were well equipped with the latest and greatest in tank technology. Um, the other interesting thing about the 22nd is that it is not any kind of Volkstrom unit or Hitler Youth or any bullshit like that. It's also not some foreign unit that the Germans equipped with outdated stuff. This was a unit of Germans who were equipped with outdated stuff and then went on to perform terribly. Um, it also, I think, helps bust the myth that all German panzer troops were extremely well trained since had the Germans in the 22nd been well trained, it's unlikely that they would have allowed their equipment to get so mangled by mice prior to their battle with the Soviet attack during Operation Uranus. So at any rate, that's all I've got on the 22nd Panzer Division, and I hope that this story has been illustrative, but also somewhat amusing. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today.